Good morning. There we go. Maybe. There we go. All right. Welcome to Faith. I'd like to welcome members. I would like to welcome visitors. Everyone on Facebook and YouTube. Everyone in person, of course. I'm glad you are all here today. It's so nice to see your faces, or the top half of your faces, <laughs> and your masks. Uh, thank you for joining us for worship. Uh, we will be doing communion, so for those of you online, virtual communion, if you don't have your elements, you can go ahead and prepare them now. We're still doing no responses. Um, we have Carol here today to respond on your behalf, and humming during songs is okay. Uh, so let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. <laughs> Are we good? Yep. Okay. You may stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have promised through your Son to be with your church forever. We give you thanks for those who founded this community of believers and for the signs of your presence in our congregation. Increase in us the spirit of faith and love, and make our fellowship an example to all believers and to all nations. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. One little guy in the back and the video, so I'm just gonna stay here. So this is a solar light. Can you see it on the camera? Okay. This particular one has two light bulbs right there in front, and it has a solar panel here, sort of on the top, on his back. 
If you put this outside, the solar panel will collect the energy from the sun's light and it will power the light bulbs so they shine in the dark. So this little guy takes the sunlight in, right, and uses it to make more light to send out and spread around. You may have little solar lights in your yards at home, or you may know someone who has them in their yards. When you're driving at night, sometimes you can see them lit up along the path of someone's front driveway or walkway. Well, this little solar light is like God's love. God gives us love, we receive it, and then it's our job to pass it on to other people. The more we watch out for God's love, the more we pray to God and abide in God, the more we can recognize how much love God has for us. And that means we have more love to give out to our friends and families and the other people we meet in our lives. This is what God wants us to do. God wants us to take the love we receive and to use it to spread out as much love as we can to other places. So let's try and do that this week. I should show you what the lights look like. If I can get it to work. There we go. See, he's cute, huh? All right, so let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for loving us so much, and thank you for giving us the ability to love other people in return. Please help us to remember to look out for your love at all times so that we can spread it out as much as we can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. first lesson is from Acts chapter 8 verses 26 to 40. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Cadence, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip went up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with his scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azos, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm number 22. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. 
All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dom dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down to worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They the Lord has acted. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent God's only Son into the world so that we might live through God. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and God's love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in God and God in us, because God has given us God's Spirit. As, and we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent God's Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as God is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because God first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their siblings, are liars. For those who do not love a sibling whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from God is this. Those who love God must love their siblings also. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. You may rise as you are able. Hallelujah. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to John. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. God removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Each branch that bears fruit, God prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you cannot do anything. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Hmm, my fan is not plugged in. Okay. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I learned some really cool stuff about vines this week in my proclaimed text study. I learned that there are actually two parts to growing the vines for wine. First is the root structure and the stem or trunk part of the vines. This provides the strength and the support for the plant. The second part is the branches, which are the part of the vines that grow the grapes. Now the branches that grow the grapes for wine apparently are never the branches that are grown from those same roots. Other fruit-bearing branches are brought in and grafted onto the plant. Apparently, if one would let the branches grow directly from the base structure itself, it wouldn't produce sufficient grapes, which is why the other fruit-bearing branches are brought in and grafted to the base structure. Robust vines often produce small, wild grapes, not good for food or beverage making. So the vine can't bear fruit without being attached to the larger vine, and the branch yields nothing without the fruit of the the yields nothing without the fruit the branches yield. Also on a vine, every living branch is expected to bear fruit. If a branch does not bear fruit, it is considered to be dead despite the other signs of life, and it is pruned away. The coolest part of this, I think, is that in order to have a successful harvest, in order to bear good fruit, it's crucial that we have other, more different parts brought in. This means that we must go out to seek those other different from us parts and bring them into our world, into God's world. This is like the advice that I told my nephew when he was younger. I'm not sure if I've told you this story or not. I told him the best thing to do if he's looking for a place to sit in the cafeteria or looking for someone to play with at the park or at camp is to find the person who is most different from him and to go ask the person if they like Pokemon. I, yeah, I explained to him how important diversity is in our lives and that the best way to cult cultivate diversity is to have, experience, have diverse experiences with people who are different from us. And, well, he was really into Pokemon at the time, so I knew that that would probably be a good topic with ample things for him to talk about with a new friend. It's the same with us here at Faith. If I, as your pastor, only focused on you all, you who are in the pews now, you who are watching on YouTube or Facebook now, you who are in our church directory now, if I only focused on your prayer concerns and your spiritual needs, and if you only focused on your spiritual needs on your, and your own lives and in each other's lives, we would be missing out on the entire rest of the world. And that would be very much to our detriment. Think of all the gifts that we could use in this church. We could use additional voices to build up a big choir. We could use more kiddos and youth to boost our education programs. We could use tech people to take over what Jules so generously offers to do for us until we find someone else. We could use lay preachers, musicians to accompany Barb perhaps. People with these ex uh, gifts exist, and we might be a much fuller church if we had more people with those gifts here with us. But if we only focus on ourselves, we'll never have that opportunity to invite others and to be richer in diversity. But it's not just because it's not just cisgendered heterosexual white people who possess these talents. We know that. This is why we turn outwards and focus on others in the ministries that we run, to be more connected with others as God desires and to draw more people into God's plan. We do just fine as we are, but imagine how much more enriched our experiences could be. Imagine how much more enriched our encounters with God could be. Now imagine this, you're a queer person. You have been shamed and shunned out of several churches since coming out. So you try and look for churches that specifically say, all are welcome. Only to find out that they will tolerate you and your partner in their services, but you cannot hold any position of authority within the church. No council position, no ministry leader. You can't be a musician or a reader. This has happened so many times that you're tired of trying new churches. 
You're tired of risking your pride anymore just because of the way you were born. You spent your entire life with people telling you that you're an abomination, telling you you're going to hell. So one day you're at a pride event, totally not thinking about church. And you see some people there wearing t-shirts with the church name on it. You become curious. You wonder, can there really be a place where I am welcomed and, more importantly, valued and cherished? This is why I want us out in the streets when the pandemic is over, standing up for the oppressed. Not because it's the right thing to do, not only because it's the right thing to do, but also because diversity will make us richer. Imagine all the gifts that people are dismissing just by ex excluding the LGBT plus population. Because another cool thing about this fine analogy is the idea that we are all connected. We, the branches, are connected to Jesus, the vine. We, the branches, are also connected to the other branches. We feed off of each other. We share the same resources to grow and thrive. We pollinate each other and bear great fruit. And we are expected to bear fruit together. If we are abiding in Jesus Christ, if we are truly rooted in Christ, we will be able to maintain our healthy connection to Christ and to each other, and we will all be able to bear good fruits together. However, if we are separated from the vine, all we are able to do is wither away. But if we allow it, God will prune away the parts of ourselves that are not bearing fruit, the parts of ourselves that are taking up resources and wasting them, God does this to enable us to bear God's good fruit. I really like what verse 3 says, after it mentions removing the branches that bear no, bear no fruit. Verse 3 says, You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. This is a good reminder to us that we don't have to wait for anything before we can begin bearing good fruit. We're already prepared to do that. We have been created good by God, cleansed by the waters of baptism and the Holy Spirit, and blessed by Jesus Christ himself. We are already good branches, capable of bearing this good fruit. And everyone else we meet, everyone that's different than us, they are also created good by God. There isn't a single, peop a single person in all of existence that God created with anything less than love. Not one. I feel like it's not very often that the expansiveness of the gospel is preached. But if the vine reading doesn't make you believe that God values the diversity of all God's people, then let's take a look at the Ethiopian eunuch story and see what that says. Let's start with the eunuch himself. What is a eunuch? In contemporary usage, a eunuch is a castrated man, but it had a broader definition in ancient times. Biblical, eunuch, biblical eunuchs can stand for all sexual minorities, literally meaning the keepers of the bed. The eunuchs served, as guard, served and guarded the women in royal palaces and wealthy households. Their employers wanted to be certain that the eunuchs would not get sexually involved with the women they were supposed to protect. So many eunuchs were castrated men, homosexual men, and intersex folk. Many, but not all, were both castrated and homosexual. Eunuchs were trusted officials who often rose to senior posts in the government. They did not fit conventional notions of gender in the Roman world. They were simultaneously men and non-men, neither male nor female. Sexually impotent, they were powerless and thus often scorned according to Roman constructs of masculinity and vir virility. This particular eunuch was a triple outsider, a gender variant foreigner from a racial minority, and his experience shows that the early Christians welcomed all kinds of outcasts. He was welcomed by Philip, converted, and baptized. He even asked Philip, what can stand in the way of my being baptized? And Philip found no reason to prevent the eunuch from receiving full membership rights in the church. Philip shows no concern about the eunuch's gender identity, sexual orientation, or race. Philip simply replies, if you believe with all your heart, you may. So what does this say to us? What does this say about a church that condemns sexual 
uh, condemns homosexuality or gender nonconformity. It says that we would be wrong to exclude someone because of their sexuality. It says that we would be wrong to exclude someone because of their gender identity or presentation. It says that we would be wrong to exclude someone because they are a foreigner. It says that we would be wrong to exclude someone because of their race. This tells us straight out that we are to not just welcome diversity, but to actively seek out diversity. Then, as the Holy Spirit ordered, go over to this chariot and join it. Join it. Get in that chariot. Sit beside the person. Talk to the person. Ask them if they like Pokemon. Help them to understand new things and listen to them so they can help you understand new things. Abide in each other as you abide in God. In order to have a successful harvest, in order to bear good fruit, it's crucial that we have other, more different parts brought in. We must go out and seek those other, different from us parts and bring them into our world, into God's world. For if we love one another, God lives in us and, God, and God's love is perfected in us. Amen. the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Um, I think we stand for this, so let us rise as you are able. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in, you ch in your church, and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word, and give yourself to the whole church on earth, so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the all that depends on this on the earth for life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love. Those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, fearful, or suffering with illness, especially Larry, Lyle, Greta, Monica, Sonia, Phil, Karen, Dorothy and Gordon, Judy, Fred, Jim, and all family and friends listed in our prayer concerns list. Provide for the needs of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
We give thanks to you for the members and the ministry of this congregation, for those who had the vision to begin, its, to begin this congregation, those who sustain its present ministry, and those who will carry its mission forward into the future. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We praise you with those celebrating significant milestones in their lives, especially Mark and Lynn, Reuben and Pat, Tony and Kate, with anniversaries this week. For the people of God in this place, and for other needs in our community, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit, especially with Athanasius, Bishop of Alexandria. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another safely. shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and sea and all their creatures, and with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. You may be seated.
Almighty God, we give you thanks that you have fed us with this heavenly food. In your grace and by your spirit, help us to be what we celebrate, the body of Christ in the world. Send us out, renewed by this sacramental meal, to do the work you have given us to do, to witness to Christ, to love you with singleness of heart, and to serve you with clarity of purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. President Bill up to read some letters. Happy anniversary. Seventy years this church has been here now in the Jeffersonville community. Um, I don't know if anybody reads the newspaper anymore, but there was a short article in the evening news yesterday. The article should have been longer, so I'm going to read the article that was submitted, <laughs> put together by our church historian, Barb Brewster. <clears throat> Faith Lutheran Church celebrates 70 years. Faith Lutheran Church, a member of the Indiana Kentucky Synod, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, celebrated its 70th anniversary on April 29, 2021. Faith Church began worship in September 1950, and the organization Sunday was celebrated April 29, 1951, with 57 adults plus children on the charter roll. The name Faith was chosen because at that time, the church possessed nothing but faith, the faith of what would become and how we could serve the community. Services were held at the Seventh-day Adventist Church in downtown Jeffersonville until 1954 when a house on 8th Street and Center Street was purchased and converted into a chapel, seating about 100 to 120 with classrooms. With membership growing acreage at 2014, Allison Lane was purchased in 1960, with the cornerstone laid in 1962 for the original building, and that's down the hall. The facilities consisted of a sanctuary, classrooms, pastor's office, kitchen, and restrooms. In 1986, a new larger sanctuary was built with office spaces, sacristy, and new restrooms. And then in 2003, the larger kitchen facilities were added, the choir room, library, storage rooms. For over 25 years, Faith was home to our pre-kindergarten weekday church school, open to children of the community, and now serves home as home to the Girl Scout troop 1243. Faith members are attentive to the current needs of Jeffersonville. Many give their time in the preparation of meals for the hungry at the Loaves of Fishes Saturday morning meal program, or volunteer in the distribution of groceries at the Center for Lay Ministries. And over the years, several members from Faith have also served on the boards of the Bliss House and the Center for Lay Ministries. Twelve pastors have served Faith since 1950, and Pastor Claire was called in August of 2020 to begin her ministry and continue our service to God's children. Now I reached out to uh, our old pastors, the 12 of them, well not 12 of them, I reached out to about 8 of them. Uh, pastors, uh, 12 pastors were Pastor Wheaton, who was the mission developer, uh, Edgar During, uh, Pastor Howard, Pastor Walter During, Pastor Hillerich, Pastor Ross, Pastor Stiege, Pastor Vogler, Pastor Gering, Pastor Hawkins, Pastor Scott Meyer and Laura Meyer, and Pastor Judy McGuire. So I'll read the letters I have uh, received in, in order here. This is from Pastor uh, Reverend Don Hillerich. Dear brothers and sisters of Faith Lutheran Church, Congratulations on your 70th anniversary in service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are so thankful for your ministry 
and that we've had a small part in your witness from 1964 to 1969. What wonderful years they were as the Holy Spirit led us in so many ways. Briefly, here are a few examples we shared. The Easter outdoor sunrise service of 1965 was unique in that all the Easter lilies turned gray and were darkened when taken inside for the second service. The temperature was 37 degrees. There were many smiles with the mistake which reflected the kindness and forgiveness of members. In 1965, members worked tirelessly gathering clothing and staple foods for the victims of the Elkhart, Indiana tornado. Items from the whole Louisville area filled the church and the Indiana National Guard provided two 18-wheelers to deliver the gifts. The Bell of Louisville was chartered for an all-Lutheran cruise and the youth group of faith presented Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Seven Warts, I'm sorry, Seven Warts. A show written and directed by member Terry Chase. With many volunteers, Faith conducted a VBS school in 1968 for the children living in the downtown Jeffersonville housing project. Spearheaded by my life's partner, Marty, and a team of wonderful, successful kindergarten was begun and flourished, meeting the needs of the families in the area. The Boy Scout Troop won a regional award for building a 28-foot tall observation tower next to the church. Each year, the Holly Halloween event down near the ditch was the toast of the town. Worship services were the center of the ministry, and due to growth and membership, two services were conducted with a very patient and gifted organist, Barbara Condra Brewster, assisting the pastor. The confirmation and youth programs for all ages expanded with retreats and trips. For growth and fellowship, Kainoga groups met regularly in members' homes. The list could continue, but these highlights reflect the presence of the Holy Spirit that permeated the congregation and all that was accomplished. There were so many members who were conduits of God's love and the ministry of Jesus Christ. In conclusion, please accept my sincere thanks for allowing me to serve Faith Lutheran Church. In his name, a blessing on your 70th anniversary for years to come, Reverend Don Hillerich. I also received a letter from Pastor Ken Vogler. Dear members and friends of Faith Lutheran Church, happy 70th anniversary. Happy 70th anniversary. I am so happy for Faith and all its members on this auspicious occasion. And though, although I cannot be there in person, I will be there in spirit. I am thrilled that I was Faith's pastor for over one third of the Ill illustrious history. Arriving in 1979, here came this young pastor who was in his very first several months and was asked to do huge projects. Introduce the green LBW hymnal and try to convince the congregation to move from monthly communion to weekly. Thankfully that all went smoothly, even though I couldn't sing a note of music. <laughs> Over the years, Faith has been blessed with many accomplishments by its faithful and loyal members. First, building a new sanctuary and church offices. Second, having a solid youth catechism program. A special thanks to Carol and John Taylor, including weekends at Lutheran Hills and Kings Island, initiating the first year students by taking them, making them ride the beast roller coaster. <laughs> Third, a solid and successful preschool program staffed by unpaid volunteers. Fourth, exciting Sunday school and Bible studies. Fifth, building a new kitchen, library, and choir room. Sixth, a softball team that actually won the church league once, <laughs> during which I broke my ankle sliding into second base. Seventh, accepting me and my wife Judy and three biracial children with love and care. All this could not have been accomplished with our founding, without our founding members. God rest their souls upon which their last 70 years could not have been done. Before my first service and sermon, my wife Judy, who had been my support for all those years at Faith, put a sheet of paper on the pulpit which read, 
kiss. I thanked her afterward and said that that was special until she told me what it meant. <laughs> Keep it short, stupid. <laughs> In closing, my family and friends will always cherish our 25 years or so at Faith and all the friends and family we met there. God, best, God bless Faith Lutheran Church and granted another 70 years of accomplishments. All thanks to God the Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, who leads faith today and into the future. Sincerely, I am in Christ, Pastor Ken Vogel. And I, I'm going to read Pastor Claire's letter. Beloveds, I certainly can't speak for the past 70 years, but I can speak for the past nine months. And if the past nine months have shown me anything, it's that the 70 years that faith has been around has cultivated an abundance of love, generosity, and faith. Jews and I have felt welcome here since our very first visit over a year ago, and faith continues to love and encourage us as we have settled in here. The wonderful stories we've heard, the warm and loving people we've met, and the passion we've seen firsthand are true testaments to this wonderful church, congregation, and ministry. I am truly honored to be doing ministry here with all of you and look forward to discovering the blessings of that the Holy Spirit has in store for the faith for the future. Grace and peace in Christ. Pastor Claire. I'll close today with, with the prayer of the day that was part of the service today that recognizes an anniversary of a church. Let us pray. Oh God, you've promised through your Son to be your church forever. We give you thanks for those who founded this community of believers and the, for the signs of your presence in our congregation. Increase in us the spirit of faith and love and make our fellowship an example to all believers and to all nations. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. On your way out, if you would uh, peruse the boards that Barb put together, all the pictures, lots of pictures, <laughs> more pictures than we could ever go through. And she's been trying to do it week after week, put up all the boards, there's some up. The building of this building that I've never seen, maybe some of you have never seen, there's a couple of the churches, the other two churches that were visited that the state faith was in so take your time and look at them over the next we'll leave them up another week so everybody gets a chance to look at them yeah. yep i'll just say very quickly on the last board on the front it has all the pictures in front of it of our 50th anniversary celebration if you see yourself in a picture or you want a picture please take, take them it. yeah we, we have too many pictures <laughs> too, too hard to catalog so um, please take it, or if you have somebody, a friend that you'd like to take a picture to, do it. They're, they're free, take them. They're free to go home with you. And on that note, we'll turn it over to announcements. And the only announcement I have is that we will have a council meeting on, in two weeks, the 16th, because of Mother's Day next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, I don't know if we have any announcements this week. Does anybody have anything? Patty? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was a key found in front of this door out here. It's a small key that looks almost like a mailbox key and it has a little ring on it. It's on my desk. So if anybody is missing the key, please see me. Um, Carol, anything? The only thing I would like to suggest or remind us, we are back in person on Wednesday morning yes. for a Bible study. Yes. We had six people on last Wednesday. If you have any interest, we would love to have you. It's a very good time for getting a heads up on what we're going to be talking about on Sunday. Hope to see some more people there. Yes, yeah, so 10.30 on Wednesdays in person. We're socially distancing and we're wearing our masks. If there's not too many people, sometimes we take our masks off because we're like spread out really far. Um, but we're following safe procedures. So yeah, 
come to that if you like. Um, I guess that's it. I mean, just the standard stuff that we say every week, um, which is in your announcement sheet. So with that, let us continue. Um, announcements. All right. Would you like to continue? Come back. Would you like to continue? Okay. Yeah. That's you. Okay. Yep. You may rise as you are able. Go forth in peace and with the courage of faith. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. The God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.